everyone, welcome back, everybody. We're here at Event Tech in Las Vegas at the Bellagio Hotel, and I'm Joe English, and we are continuing our series, EM All Access, talking to brand marketers about cool things that they're doing out there in the world of technology. And I'm joined today by Michael Peach from IBM. And before we say anything, Michael, I have to tell you, my first job out of college, I was an intern with IBM, and I bring it up because um, I never pass by a chance to say thank you to starting my career to a company like IBM that takes chances on young people. So thank you oh, for that's that. Right. I was, I was yeah. also an intern at one point. <laughs> well, we may have been there at the same time. <laughs> but you're doing some really cool things with B2B engagements. Mm -hmm. um, you did something at Mobile World Congress this past year, and we can start kind of start the conversation there. Maybe tell us about what this was that you did there. Sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll, I'll start by sort of prefacing the challenge a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Mobile World Congress, biggest mobile event in the world. Mm -hmm. um, IBM is a relative, relatively new to the mobile enterprise space. Mm -hmm. uh, we really made an entry there about two years ago and have been growing steadily ever since. So we wanted to be able to create an event experience that would really help people understand why we were there, mm -hmm. what we had to offer, uh, and really build some awareness for our brand in the space. Yeah. Um, at the same time, as anyone who's been to Mobile World Congress knows, it's enormous. It's huge. It's a really big event. It's <laughs> incredibly crowded. <laughs> yes. And um, real estate is precious. And there's so much going on. When you're walking down the hallways, exactly. they, they broadcast the keynotes on the sides of the hallways. It's just, it's overwhelming. You know? So the, the approach that we took was to say, um, how can we look at the way that we might engage a prospect through a digital channel versus a face-to-face -face channel? And what would an exhibit look like if that's what we wanted to do? Mm -hmm. um, so we created something that we've internally nicknamed the Cauldron. Um, Great name. It kind of, kind of looks <laughs> like it. It's, um, it was really built around the idea of a museum exhibit uh -huh. um, with an interactive, it was an interactive cityscape. And it was really designed to tell the mobile enterprise story through the lens of industry. Um, so each area of the city corresponded with a particular industry, and the exhibit ran off of a series of tablets that were ringed around this three-dimensional cityscape. So a client could come in, pick an industry, it would immediately cause the cityscape to flash and light up. You can think about, the best analogous I can think of, like if you go into the visitor center of a national park mm -hmm. and it's yeah. got that yeah. 3D topographic uh -huh. map, and then you hit something and it pops up and does lights that. up yeah. and narrates. Uh -huh. That's what this did. Yeah. Um, and it had, each of the stations had uh, earphones that the prosecutor could put on. And the mobile app would then take them through a little guided exploration, starting with um, a high level point of view mm -hmm. um, around the industry and the application of enterprise mobility, uh, and then take them through a series of case studies of IBM clients mm -hmm. where we've actually come in and helped them transform that aspect of their business. So let me ask you, when you walk into the booth, do you have to swipe your card? Do you have to register? Does, is somebody going to grab you and say, oh, let me, let me run you through this demo? How did, no, how that, did that, was actually, that was actually what was kind of unique about it is we specifically designed the engagement to be self-service. Um, so, you, and I think everyone's used to this in the event space that people come in and they're, they're interested and they want to talk, but they're also a little bit wary because yes. they know the you don't second, want to get trapped. The second you, the second you, I took off my badge, but the second you scan my badge, right. I know I'm on your mailing list forever. Yes. Uh, and that's both a good and a bad thing. But what we found actually is we sort of looked at, and it's not precisely an apples to apples comparison, but you know we definitely found people were much more willing to come in. They were willing to explore, and especially once they were there for a little while and realized no one was going to immediately interrupt them and start directing the demo, they would actually get engaged pretty deeply. So we, the way we sort of measured this is we looked at interactions per hour. Um, so how many people came in and played around with it in an hour. And we compared that to what we got in terms of sort of number of conversations we had per hour mm -hmm. at more traditional events. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, it's not a perfect metric, but essentially the uh, Cauldron exhibit had a 172% uh, higher engagement rate Amazing. than a traditional trade show booth. Mm -hmm. How long were they interacting? Was it longer than a traditional interaction? I think so. Um, I, minute wise, it was pretty consistently around four to seven minutes, okay. which that's, actually isn't that's bad. Fair. That's really good, especially in such a busy environment exactly. like we're talking about. Um, these people are obviously live. They're, they're there at an live event, but you're treating them a bit more like a digital consumer. Mm -hmm. Talk about that and how that experience is. I think for us, what we're trying to do is it, 
and, and partly it's nature of my job in that I have both digital and event marketing responsibilities, and I'm always thinking about how to put them together. But it seems to me we're, we're much more precise about the way we construct an audience journey when we're thinking about digital, mm -hmm. and partly because it's so easy to lose audience along the way when you're trying to engage them through a digital channel. That for me and the way we've tried to uh, construct these experiences was to think about that journey. And it really, it starts with self-discovery, usually. Um, it allows them to get into a piece of content. It allows us then to engage them, bring them a little bit further along, um, nurture them along to the point that they're really receptive to having that conversation, that sort of real face-to-face -face solution focused conversation that ultimately leads to a conversion. So we really tried to structure the event Focus that way. We're, we're really only just starting to scratch, scratch the surface of it, mm -hmm. to my mind. So we've, we, with this example, we created something that pulls people in, gets them to engage, gets them to spend time with content um, without having to be roped in by staff. And the next step is then to start to look at how can we use that same sort of blended digital physical experience um, to get them to register, yeah. to get them to self-identify, and to select a next step that they'd like to take. So for example, imagine, um, and again, sort of we're looking at this because we've got fairly complex technical solutions, obviously, right. that we're selling. Um, but sort of my vision is I'd love to be able to take this to the next level where a client comes in, spends some time exploring through the journey, gets to a point in the digital experience where it's the app essentially says, hey, you've dug pretty deep in here. Mm -hmm. You know what? Why don't you sign up for a demonstration tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh -huh. and someone will take you through this in more depth. So a very personalized exactly. response. Yeah. Um, and really to be able to tailor it so that we can suggest a next step mm -hmm. that they themselves sign up for. Yeah. Um, and progress them a little bit further along while they're at the event. I think that'll be really exciting. Yeah. Now you said something really interesting. This is a deeply technical area, mm -hmm. right? It's complex. And there's probably a part of your peop the people in your business that would love to just publish a white paper and put it in people's hands, right? But you're taking a really different approach here with this museum exhibit type thing. Are you still able to deliver the message? Do you feel like you're, you know, people are getting the content? We are. The content? It's a question of at what point are we engaging them and how do we tell the story? Again, it's, it's, you really have to think about it in terms of the client mm -hmm. discovery. And, you know, when you're, when you're working sort of nurturing a client through, say, a, a digital lead funnel, there is a very appropriate point in time for detailed solution level content. Um, but first, you've got you've to get them to a point where they're ready to, to start to consume that. And yeah. it's never, you know, no one would ever say, well, lead with the 10 page technical white paper. Um, that's not something you use as demand generation asset. And it's not that, you know, the deepest, most complex technical demonstration is not the first thing you should show someone when they walk into a booth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's a pain point discussion, but then how can we have the pain point discussion through an interactive digital exhibit versus yeah. uh, a face-to-face -face exhibit, and how can we put those side by side? You know, the, the other thing that I sort of look at is I, when I'm thinking about digital and, and event marketing is we, we treat them so differently, mm -hmm. and it's, it's always kind of strange to me that we do that. Um, you know, digital has very much become a place where you just sort of, you know, you throw it up against the wall. Like, See if it sticks. What sticks? Let's yeah. throw that out there. Yeah. Oh, well, that didn't work. Let's change the campaign a little bit this way and we'll adjust this knob and we'll continue. You know, there's this whole cycle of continuing and refining. And we don't do that in the event world. Right. We treat the event as sort of this one-off monolith that we work on for months and months and months. Mm -hmm. and so I've tried to be... I try to be more experimental as well mm -hmm. in that arena. You know, let's try something and learn from it and try again and tweak different parameters. And you're also it. keeping your investment going. You've oh, told yeah. me that you, you're taking these exhibits and taking them to other mm -hmm. events, which is something that a lot of event planners don't do is they de develop the big consumer electronic show experience and yeah. it happens once. And, I, and to be honest, you know, we, we definitely, we designed it for Mobile World Congress, yeah. um, but it worked so well and this, I think, is partly the nature of our company is we're, we're obviously a very large company and, and word sort of spreads yeah. quickly. And, you know, I had my team in Germany was calling up while we were still planning for Mobile World Congress saying, that looks really cool. Can, can I take it to CBIT after you're done? Yeah. 
And was, oh, sure, it's, it's in Europe. Um, and then we ended up bringing it back over. It's actually in Las Vegas now. Yeah. Um, so we brought it back. We brought it back for CTIA's big event. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I think total we've used it. Um, we've used the whole exhibit about five times. But the other interesting thing about the approach, and again, this is, you know, the fact that so much of the content is inherently digital, is it's very easy to scale up and down. So yes, you can have this whole big exhibit with a cityscape, but we've done a lot of much smaller events where we just have the tablet. Because mm -hmm. um, the whole experience can run on a tablet. Yeah. Um, and so it allows us where we look at not only sort of enormous 85,000 type people events that we do for like Mobile Congress, mm -hmm. but we can bring this into a client briefing with 100 people yeah. um, and just sort of hand it out and, and let them play around with it and yeah, do a little cool. bit of self-guided exploration there oh, too. That's great. So, well, it's cool to see how you're innovating, and I really can't wait to see what you guys come up with next. Um, thanks so much for joining us, sure. Michael. And thanks for you for watching. Um, we'll be back with another segment here from Event Tech with another brand marketer. And thanks for watching EML Access. I'm Joe English, and we'll see you soon.